Good afternoon, Chairman Schatz, Vice Chair Murkowski, members of the committee. Thank you for the opportunity to provide testimony on two important legislative proposals and for your continued support of the Department of Health and Human Services efforts to improve health and well-being for American Indians and Alaska Natives. Your consideration today of Senator Cortez Masto's Indian Health Service Workforce Parity Act and Senator Bennett's Tribal Access to Clean Water Act underscores the commitment to improving the quality of life in Indian Country. I'm Melanie Annie Gorin, the Assistant Secretary for Legislation at HHS. My office serves as the primary link between the Department and Congress, providing technical assistance on legislation, facilitating informational briefings related to Department programs, and supporting the implementation of, pass, of legislation passed by Congress. The Department has been pleased to collaborate with Congress and this committee to investigate the many challenges facing Indian Country. HHS remains committed to working with Congress to improve the health for tribal and native communities, including finding solutions related to clean water access and IHS workforce shortages. The IHS, as a rural health care provider, experiences difficulty recruiting and retaining health care professionals. In particular, recruiting physicians and other primary care cl clinicians has been especially challenging. There are over 1,800 current vacancies at HHS. Staffing shortages are particularly prevalent in the behavioral and mental health fields, which has only exacerbated the substance use crisis and suicide crisis that tribes across the country are facing in their communities. Workforce challenges and the impacts of, on care that come from them are one of the top concerns raised to the department by tribes. My staff and I have heard firsthand during our visits to the Ogallala Sioux Tribe on the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota and the Blackfeet Tribe in Montana. The Backbeat Tribe shared that workforce shortages of over 40% at their hospitals and clinics greatly impacts the accessibility and quality of health care in their rural community. These experiences have been echoed by other tribes across the nation to IHS, particularly during tribal consultation. The IHS continues to support new strategies to develop workforce and leverage advanced practice providers and paraprofessionals to improve the access and quality of health care in tribal communities, and ultimately the Indian, but ultimately the Indian Health Service needs additional authorities and resources to build our workforce pathway. That's why the President's budget has included a number of proposals that has sought to make IHS more competitive with other federal agencies in our hiring process and reduce systemic barriers to recruitment and retention. The IHS Workforce Parity Act would allow recipients of IHS scholarships and loan programs to fulfill their service obligations through half-time clinical practice. This bill is certainly aligned with the goals of IHS in many respects. The President's budget includes a similar proposal that per permits both IHS scholarships and loan repayment recipients to fulfill service obligations through half-time clinical practice over an extended period of time. This would increase the ability of IHS to recruit and retain health care clinicians and to provide primary care health and specialty services. This is one of many proposals in the President's budget that are budget neutral, small fact fixes that have major impacts in the efficacy and quality of IHS. Specifically, IHS also seeks tax exemption for their health professional scholarship and loan, re loan repayment programs. Exempting this program would allow IHS to support an additional 190 providers in a given year. The agency is seeking discretionary use of all Title 38 personnel fl flexibilities to help pay higher salaries and offer more flexible time off to providers. Permanent authority to hire and pay experts and consultants that would combat, combat future pandemics and emergencies and unique healthcare challenges by providing additional high-level resources to IHS unavailable in the current workforce. The agency is also seeking legislative authority to conduct mission-critical emergency hiring beyond 30-day appointments to fill key positions. I want to reiterate that the Biden-Harris administration agrees that water is a sacred resource and must be protected. The administration and HHS have worked hard to begin to address decades of chronic underinvestment in infrastructure for tribal and native communities. The bipartisan efforts of Congress, including many champions in this room, have helped to ensure critical funds for clean drinking water and modern wastewater and sanitation were, systems were included in the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. We are committed to ensure that the, these, these historic funds are implemented successfully and that the dollars reach Indi Indian country as quickly as possible. That being said, too many tribal families still do not have access to clean water and reliable wastewater infrastructure. The Tribal Access to Clean Water Act aims to help expand HHS's role in providing access to reliable and clean water on tribal lands. 
HHS is still currently reviewing the language and implications of this bill, but that said, the department would like to continue to work with the bill sponsors and committee to ensure compatibility with existing sanitation facility authorities and determine the best way to serve non-eligible homes and commercial properties located in, within tribal communities. Thank you again for the opportunity to testify today. Thank you, Senators Cortez Masto and Bennett, who have led these legislative efforts to fix systemic challenges in Indian country. We look forward to continuing our work with Congress on these bills. As always, HHS is committed to working closely with tribal communities and our external partners and understand the importance of working together to address the needs of American Indians and Alaska Natives. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Isom-Claus, please proceed. 